consider we are uh, looking for the same UI which we discussed in a couple of sessions back. So what I need is a window. A window will have min max close kind of buttons here. Then we will also need something called as a button inside a window. And then a button should have a video inside it. So one more time, just to ensure that these boxes have some meaning, I'll provide some name to these boxes. So this is going to be our window. This is going to be button. And this is going to be a video inside it. Now, as I said earlier, this is very difficult to achieve in Windows Forms applications. So instead of we doing a drag and drop in case of Windows Forms, imagine in WPF, we understanding the hierarchy of controls like this. So there is something which is called as a window, if we understand the hierarchy well, which has got something called as button and which internally has got something which is called as video. And the video can have something which is called as a source file as an input. So if we understand the hierarchy, how about if we represent the hierarchy in the form of markup, like what we have been doing in case of web applications. So imagine there is a window, window has a button and button has a video. And then just to ensure that hierarchically contents are correct, we will close this button here and then we will close finally the window object somewhere here. So we have a window closed. And then maybe just to ensure that we are writing it properly, I'll close it like this. So this particular hierarchy, which seems like a kind of markup, but I won't call it as HTML because HTML has got standard tags. This looks like custom tags all the time. So I'll call it as XML. But then if it is XML, you can't just have any tag. For example, I can't have a tag called as maybe ABC inside window. So ultimately, if we are looking for some tags in case of WPF, then it is always according to some sort of schema. And since it's XML according to schema, we will no longer call it as XML. We will call it as XAML, that is Extensible Application Markup Language. So imagine instead of we, we can very well do the drag and drop. But instead of we doing a drag and drop, one can very well design the entire UI in a markup format. Okay, how about this? If at all on a button click, we need to say hi in the alert, just like what we saw earlier in Windows Forms. Then what we can do is we can specify a property here called as click and we can specify some function name. Let's say maybe button underscore click or button one underscore click. Now, this is something similar to ASP.NET, it looks like. But then compilation model is going to be a bit different. So how different this compilation model will be? So here is what happens. Normally, where exactly you will write button one underscore click. So there is going to be one C sharp class file. So if the file that uh, we talked about this file, if we consider this as let's say if this is window one, just like form one, and if I consider this as window1.xaml, then you will see we will have a file here. Let's name it as window1.xaml.cs since it's C-sharp code we are planning to write down. And that file will have some class. And that class will have some code written, which is going to be button1 underscore click. And there will be code inside it, some code here which is going to be C sharp code. So the class name will be obviously window one in this case. So you will notice there is going to be C sharp file written and there is going to be some sort of XAML file written. Now obvious question that you may have is how exactly compilation is going to come happen? Because what we uh, did understand earlier, in case of Windows form, when you drag and drop a button, there is automatically created C sharp class file, which is called, which is a partial class file. And this developer's partial file or partial class file and the auto generated partial class file, they get clubbed together. And then we have only MSL generated, which is going to be part of some assembly later on. What is it that is going to happen in case of WPF? You will notice that whatsoever our 
these controls representation. So you will find out there is one more file which is going to get constructed which is normally called as glue file or auto generated file. So there will be window one dot g dot cs kind of you can say file written which will also have this window one class written. Both of these classes one in window one dot xaml dot cs and one in window one dot g dot cs both of them are ultimately going to be so called partial classes. And then in this window one class that you see what is going to be there is some sort of element perspective C sharp code. So element specific code is what I'm going to go and mention here. Element specific C sharp code. So if there is a button written in the window, you will find out button becomes a button class object, click becomes a event, button one underscore click becomes a handler and so on. So whatever elements that we have in markup, those elements can be presented in the form of C sharp in the window one dot g dot cs file. G is, uh, some people say G stands for glue or you can call it as generated. So you will find out these things are going to get clubbed together and then what we are going to go and end up with is C sharp. So ultimately these things that you see on your screen, these things, these are going to get compiled into MSIL and that's going to be part of MSIL section of assembly. But however, the XAML that you write, it's not the same element hierarchy that you write. So ultimately, since we are yet to understand some concept, XAML is not something that, you know, you write and you get it as it is. You will find out there are many more elements which are going to get inserted within this button, within this window and a video itself. So what you typically write down is well known by the word as logical tree. So this is very well known as logical tree of the WPF elements. But then visually whenever actual UI is going to get plotted that is always going to be called visual tree which is a bit different, bit complex compared to what you understand it as logical tree. So what you see is what you get is not the concept in case of WPF. What you write ultimately so that particular uh, a code seems very easy to understand, but when it actually is, get, is going to get plotted on a screen, it's going to be a bit different. There are certain surprises that you will see in case of UI, which we will understand in terms of visual tree. So you will find out from the visual tree perspective, certain extra elements are going to get added over here. So I should put it here, some extra elements. Simplest example, you will see there is some extra element over here. Let's call it as border. You, I have not added any kind of a border, but that will be added automatically. Then there will be something which is called as add-on decorator. So I'll put it here, add-on decorator. You will notice these elements I have not added by myself. And then as of now, as a newbie to uh, WPF, you may not even understand why do I need these elements. But then you will find out whatsoever are the elements which are automatically going to get added or maybe whatever elements which are from the perspective of something called as styling, you will find out those XAML elements you may not see as a part of CS, this particular automatically generated code, because many of the uh, evaluations are going to go and happen at a runtime. So in such cases, you will find out the XAML resources so again, I should put here a word because that has a meaning here. You will find out XAML resources out of this XAML. So I'll put it here. A very well known word, XAML resources. You will understand it as and when we progress in the session. So XAML resources are going to get converted into something that is called as BAML in here. So there is going to be something called as a XAML C or XAML compiler which is going to go and convert the content into something called as BAML. And that is something which is binary application markup language. And you will find out here WPF is going to work in a bit different manner. This BAML in case of hierarchy of assembly, if this represents assembly on the extreme right, we know that assembly has got certain sections. So assembly has got certain section called as assembly metadata. 
it has got another section which is called as resources it has got one section which is called as type metadata and then it has got last section which is called as msil so you will find out in the wpf case what do we have here is there is going to be msil so let me put here msil so your xaml.cs and window window1.g.cs these partial classes are going to get compiled and clubbed into msil there is going to be type metadata which is simple attribute information and extra information about the type being used into your application and then there is section which is called as resources now you will notice here the basic difference is in resources normally some sort of third party references or third uh, other than the code kind of references are going to get maintained you will find out in resources here this baml content is going to get added so here resources are also going to have something which is called as baml and which is a very important part or to understand in case of wpf so there will be something called as resources and there will be something which is called as uh, a baml uh, in the resources section so and this baml plays a very vital role in case of wpf because that is something which is going to be used internally for the purpose of putting the hierarchy of elements on the screen this is what is going to make the complex ui elements possible which means having a video inside a button having a text box inside a button such things are possible because of the baml concept and which is something plotting the baml understanding the baml and plotting it on a screen is going to be responsibility of wpf runtime in general and here finally what we have is assembly metadata so i would say assembly metadata so assembly metadata is what i should say maybe i'll just write down assembly meta as the word you already understand yeah so normal wpf assembly is going to go and have a structure like this so what i'm going to do now i'm going to switch to slides one more time and the same diagram we are just going to go and quickly run through in case of slides